Hi friends, in today's video I'm going to show you how to install your effects into your Final Cut Pro library so that you can use them on all of your projects. Um, seems to be something that people ask a lot of questions about. To my knowledge there's three different ways to do it. I'm going to show you how to do all three so you can start using your effects straight away. Uh, let's get into it. So a little while ago I made a video where I gave away some free adjustment layers and taught you how to use them. Um, if you're interested in that then I'll pop a link somewhere so that you can go and watch that video. Uh, in that video I did briefly show how to install those adjustment layers and since uploading that video I have had a ton of questions and a lot of confusion over how you actually install those effects. So. I thought I would try and clear things up to the best of my knowledge with this video where I'm just going to show you the three different ways that I believe you can add effects into Final Cut. So let's dive into my screen and get started. So the first way that you can install effects is also the one that costs money. So it may not be the option that you want to go for but it's also super easy. So if you want to, you can purchase Apple Motion, which is a sort of companion app to Final Cut Pro. It's kind of Apple's answer to Adobe After Effects. It's for more kind of motion graphics. And if you're purchasing like title packs and stuff from different websites around the web, then the chances are the people that made those packs used Apple Motion to do it. Now, I don't really use Apple Motion loads, uh, but I do own it. And the reason I'm telling you this is because when you install Apple Motion, costs about $50, I think, uh, last time I checked. When you install Apple Motion, when you then go to your finder and you go to your user folder, you've got a movies folder here. And in that movies folder, you will find that you suddenly have a motion templates folder. Now that motion templates folder will have these folders within it and if it doesn't have those folders you can create those folders um, and within there you can then add all of the effects that you've purchased. These are separate to the effects which are built in that come with Final Cut Pro and this is probably the best way to add effects. The reason being that if you add your effects this way, they're completely safe, they're standalone, and when you update Final Cut Pro, these effects will be absolutely fine, they'll stay here, um, and that is fine. You're probably saying, well, this is a complete cop-out, I don't wanna spend $50 just to install my effects. Um, that's fine, the next way I'm gonna show you is the more traditional way, um, it's just a bit weird how you do it. So, if you don't wanna buy Apple Motion, the next way that you can add your effects is that you will go to your applications folder here and you will find Final Cut Pro. Where are we? Final Cut Pro. You right click on it and you will say show package contents. And then from here, we need to navigate our way deep, deep inside the folder structure to find where those effects live. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on contents, then we're gonna go to plugins, then we're gonna go to media providers, then we're gonna go to motion effect.fxp, then we're gonna go to contents, then we're gonna go to resources, and then we're gonna go all the way down to templates and this folder here when you get there yours might look slightly different to this but in this folder you'll essentially have effects generators titles and transitions at this point you can take the purchased or created assets that you want to install into Final Cut and you can paste them into one of these folders so you could paste it into the title if it's a title pack Transitions would go into the transitions, effects into effects, and you would just paste them straight into that folder. And then if, if you've got Final Cut Pro open when you paste them in, you're going to need to close Final Cut and reopen it, and those effects will be there. So that is the, that's the kind of default way to add effects into Final Cut Pro if you don't own Apple Motion, which is the secondary piece of software. There is one big gotcha if you're installing your effects this way, and that is that this is part of the Final Cut 
uh, program's core structure. And as such, if there's ever an update for Final Cut Pro, and you update your software, you will find that all of your previously installed uh, effects, transitions, etc., will have disappeared because they'll be overwritten during the update. And this can be really annoying. And this is why buying Apple Motion um, could be a better option in that instance because they're completely separate and they're safe. That said, if you still don't want to go and buy Apple Motion and you, you want to just use this approach, you just need to bear in mind that before you update your software, you're going to want to come to this folder, find this templates folder, and just copy that entire templates folder and put it somewhere safe. Keep it in your Dropbox or in a Google Drive, on your desktop, on a hard drive, whatever, wherever you know it's safe and you can keep it. And that means that... Um, when you update Final Cut, you can then just duplicate that folder that you've kept safe, paste it back into this templates folder here, and your effects will show again. The reason I suggest duplicating it instead of just re-adding them after is because Final Cut gets quite picky about its folder locations. So you could put the same effect in there after an update, but it still might not recognize the previously used projects which have used that effect and it might still say it's missing it would only have to be slightly different folder name or file name or structure and it's still going to think it's missing so if you duplicate the folder put it somewhere safe you know that when you put it back there after an update it's going to follow exactly the same folder path and final cut is then going to you know reattach it to all of the projects where you might have used that effect so yeah, that's a bit annoying, right? And what I've actually found is in recent years, Final Cut has been progressing quite nicely with updates and refreshes, new features and stuff. So whereas a few years ago, the updates weren't particularly frequent for Final Cut and it wasn't that annoying, um, they seem to have been updating it more frequently and thus it becomes more annoying that every time there's an update, it deletes the effects that you've put in here. So I don't really think Apple intend for you to use this approach, but it does work and you don't have to spend the money. There is one other approach that will not cost you money and will avoid this mess of a folder structure. Um, and that is to kind of cheat the system a little bit. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But before I do, I just want to say that this is not necessarily foolproof. Um, a lot of comments on the previous video I did about this, some people were saying yes it worked, others were saying no it didn't. So essentially this would be my preferred option, try this final approach um, and if it doesn't work then you've still got the two other that you can choose and you know you may say well I'm never going to spend the money on Apple Motion in which case you can still do this and you can obviously make that choice to live with the fact that you'll have to just manage the updates a little bit more. So the final approach is, do you remember I said if you buy Apple Motion you get this um, in your movies folder here, you get this motion templates folder and in there you can then have these folders and um, Final Cut will recognize these. So if you don't have Apple Motion, what you can do is you can fake this folder and you would do that by creating a new folder, okay? You would call it motion templates um, I'm just going to call it Motion Templates 1 because I've already got a Motion Templates folder. Okay, um, It's really important that you just call it Motion Templates with a space and you put the capital M and the capital T. Don't put the one on the end. I'm only doing that because I've got a Motion Templates folder. And then within there, you can create another folder called Titles with a capital T and you can create another folder um, called Transitions, capital T, um, and so on and so forth. You can create whatever you need in there. Um, the final step of the puzzle, though, is that you must right-click on that folder and say Get Info. And when this window opens up in the file name and extensions, you're going to need to add a hidden file name to this, which is dot .localized and that's localized with a Z, it's American, so that's how they're spelling it. Um, and then 
you can click enter and that is what that will need in order for Final Cut to recognize that folder. You will need to do the same thing on all of the folders in here, same on the titles one dot localized and the same on the transitions one oops spelled to English localized like so so now that essentially gives you all of the benefits from having Apple Motion in the way that you can manage your assets but without actually buying the program. However, as I've said, some people seem to have run into difficulties. I've not been able to manage to, to kind of work out and resolve why some it's worked for some people and, and not for others. Um, but essentially, if you don't want to buy Apple Motion, then try this. And the beauty of this approach is that once they're in there, you can update Final Cut and it isn't going to mess with your effects. If that doesn't work, you can either spend the money and buy Apple Motion. It is a great bit of software. You might have fun having a play with it. I've certainly had a dabble in the past and found it to be sort of worthwhile, particularly useful if you've bought effects and say like a title pack and they're not quite right how you want them then you can open them in Apple Motion and potentially tweak them to suit your needs which is great still saves time compared to making them completely from scratch um, and yeah and if you don't want to buy Apple Motion then you can go back to the deep folder structure bury it within the actual program it does work the effects are fine you just have to make sure that you keep a backup of your effects because Final Cut will overwrite them every time there's a software update. So yeah, that's it. Three different ways to add effects into your Final Cut library. I hope you found that helpful. I hope that cleared up a lot of the comments and questions that came from the previous video that I did. Um, drop me a comment if you've got any further questions. Um, I always do my best to get back to everybody um, and would love to hear um, if you've got any other questions about this process or about Final Cut in general. So um, thanks for watching. Um, I'll see you next time. <laughs>